shit. So this day just keeps getting better and better. So I've blown my transmission cooler line off the cooler and pumped all the oil out. I'm on the side of the freeway and my uh, oil cooler line decided to blow off. So I've pulled the crimp fitting off, put it back on the barb. Jake's coming with some oil and a hose clamp. So Let's, let's hope I don't get killed by all the vehicles that don't want to move over. Back on the road, Jake come and rescued me. We poured uh, six quarts of oil in it. It takes 18 quarts when I drain the converter. So it only took six quarts to get us back up and going. But uh, what an experience to sit on the side of the highway for an hour and not one person stops. Um, I don't know, people just aren't friendly anymore, I guess. I don't know what's happened. So anyway, off I go. I'm going to Kenworth to get a gasket for my power steering housing on the truck. Okay, this is the compressor. I'm pretty sure it's been leaking here off this side. It's quite a bit of... This O-ring looks really flat. But this is kind of concerning right here. we got something going on under the head. So probably going to be pulling the head off this compressor to see what's going on. Change the gasket under it. Okay, I'm going to spray this stuff all over it and see if it'll eat the grease off. She's a mess. Seems to be taking it off. Softening it up. This is what I used to clean the engine off the C15 and it worked really well and uh, here's a picture of what it looked like before and after. Anyway, I've sprayed it all over these compressor head parts and this stuff was really caked on there black carbon i mean you could take a screwdriver and it'd hardly come off and i thought how in the world am i ever going to clean this up but i sprayed it on there and then i just ran some solvent in there and it's it's come off really well so let's see if the rest of it comes off this is a piece i sprayed with it That out, came right off. Here's the other side. Comes right out.
this is the these are the unloaders that I'm going to put in now and uh, they give you some silicone grease that goes with it oh yummy there's no piston in there where's the piston I got a spring but no piston you have got to be shitting me Can't anything go right? For sakes. No piston. There's no piston in the bag. Gah! Okay, back from a cat dealer. Whoop! That's not the one I want. I got me a I got me a kit that has the piston in it. See there's the piston. This kit did not have the piston in it. Don't know why, but this one does. See, it's got gasket, spring, silicone grease, the unloader valve assembly, the O-ring that goes on that piston. So what you do is, I'm not gonna open this other silicone tube, I already got one open here, is take the the uh, cap off of that and there is some silicone grease on here but I'm going to put more Bendix must have really improved these unloader valves because th these new ones have a a band here wear band the o-ring o-ring and a wear band so they must have decided they needed a wear band because it was wearing the o-rings out so we'll put some goo in there because that's where the piston's going to go. And then this is going to go up in the head. And I'd grab the camera and show you. But my fingers is covered in crap. So anyway, it goes down in that hole. I pushed it in there. And then I've got to put this O-ring on this piston. And the piston will go in there along with this spring so I'll put the spring in first like that okay then the piston will go in here and what it's gonna do is when I put the lid on it'll compress that spring push that seal into the bore like that and that's how it operates okay we'll screw that baby down slowly make sure the piston goes in okay Hopefully I didn't cut the o-ring, shouldn't I? had it greased up with so much silicone. Yeah, it's going in pretty free. So I'm pretty sure I did it right. I'm pretty sure. What's the worst that could possibly happen? It doesn't work? Do I have to do it again? There we go. Okay, now let's turn it over. Oh yeah, she's working. Pushing air. Okay, we're ready to put this baby in the hole. Oh, dear. Oh. Okay, Jake said I gotta um, put that inside nut and washer on before I get it all the way in the hole. Otherwise, they're gonna play hell doing it. So, it says you can't get your hand in from like up here once it's in. I can see that for sure. So, flat washer's on. Okay, get, get my hand up in there from the back now, if I can get it pushed down enough to get it off started. Oh, there we go. Sweet. Okay, now. Okay, I got the compressor on and I painted this front cover where the paint was gone. And Jake has... Um, Taking off all the old wiring loom over to the alternator and everything because it was so cooked and it was falling apart. And so we separated the hot from the ground and they're in separate looms. Didn't want the alternator, the battery cable to short out there because that would be like a 145 amp 12 volt welder and it would start a fire. 
for sure. So we've got that all redone, clear back into here, and we got things tidied up and tied down. And this is the hose I got for the compressor. And now I'm going to put the pipe in and hook that up. There we go. So, I'm going to figure out how to do this. That looks good. Right there. Okay, I'm going to cut this pipe off. It goes in like this. And I'm going to cut it off right there in that general direction. Okay, you're you're probably asking yourself, uh, Jeff, do you know what you're doing here? Yeah. When I was in high school, I had a 57 GMC, three quarter ton. Had a 347 Pontiac in it, because that's what GMC put in their trucks. They didn't put Chevrolet motors, they put Pontiac motors. They had like a 288 V8 and a 316. And the 347 so I had a 347 anyway the angle on the exhaust out, uh, ports was was uh, in just a little bit a little steeper angle than a regular Pontiac so straight up Pontiac headers wouldn't fit it even though the flanges and everything were the same the gaskets so I decided I was gonna build my own headers so in high school we had like a shop class of course I was building these at home but so I was fitting and tacking everything together at home I didn't have a wire feed I just used oxyacetylene to tack it together and then I'd bring it to my shop class and and weld it together there anyway the teacher thought I was out of my mind until he saw when I brought them all kind of mocked up and tacked together he was absolutely flabbergasted I was able to build a set of headers that looked exactly like something you would buy out of the store other than there was a lot of weld joints around it and I could have sanded those all off and ground them down but I it just it made them look cool I thought so okay one more time I think I'm all lined up good here on your butts. Bingo. And Bingo was his name, oh. Okay. Jeff's custom oil tube manufacturing there it is <laughs> that's what I needed pretty simple is it gonna work I sure hope so it's bent it a little bit here opened it up the see that it's gonna pop that tack if I ain't careful but I think it's gonna work I do I do just need the welder all up now okay I got the oil line done and welded up so I'm putting it on you know I don't I wonder if I should do that yet though I wonder if I should get the other one on and then slip that uh, hell I can get that other on heck with it I'm gonna tighten this up and be done with it you know what though one thing I didn't check was make sure I didn't have a plug or a damn paper towel in here that's the last thing I would need is to put an F and paper towel in there and forget it yeah, 
shit, Jeff. Oh, somebody said I needed some cap plugs. Yeah, I got tons of them. I got tons of them. But it's easier to shove paper towels in the hole and then forget they were there and burn things up, you know, run them through the engine, filters, burn up the turbos, you know, shit like that. Ain't it? It's just always funner to do shit like that. So, now, mates. Okay, throw the pipe on the ground, scratch it all up. Go ahead, Jeff, do that. Yay! So if I snug this one here first, then I can adjust the pipe on the other two hoses till it fits correctly. Uh-oh, that ain't in the deal all the way. There we go, now we're on. Just like being here, ain't it? Just like being here helping Jeff. You helping Jeff. Hey, I love those pictures you guys have been sending me, especially those truck ones. There's a lot of guys that, with some pretty effing cool trucks. All right, see, here we are now with this. So somehow I've got to get that hose on there. So, geez, I should have, I'm going to probably end up taking that pipe off to do that, ain't I? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? So now, I think I've got, I got tons of hose on this and plenty on that. I'll just clamp that down now. Okay, I gotta just get it this way. The back of that clamp's touching the doggone retard or the oil filter or whatever oil supply and back from the filter. Okay, what do you think? Is this gonna work? Gonna work? Gonna work? Gonna work? Huh? Huh? Woohoo! I got a new elbow for this. Jake's running town to get it. This is one off the junkyard truck. And I'd like to replace it because it isn't in the best of shape. I'd hate to see that blow off. Okay, got a I got a new hose for this. And I these are very pricey. My sister-in-law works at the truck store. So she gift wrapped it for me. Put a ribbon on it. How much was this? 120 bucks? $125 for this elbow from Packard, made in China. I think that's in Detroit. Detroit, China. Hey boys, what do you think of my pretty new elbow? It's a pretty ribbon on it. I really like the ribbon. It's very, very nice. Okay, I want to take the Kenny out for a test run, but I can't because uh, after running it last night with the retarder on and got the oil good and hot, there's a crack right in here. Okay, I don't think it's broke right there after further inspection, but I, I got looking up here, and I don't know if you can see it, but it's obvious there's a crack right in there.
Okay, I've still got one more leak right here. And right at the top, uh, there's a stud hole here. But it, I just couldn't figure out where it was leaking. So I took uh, my map gas torch and I just heated it up and watched it. And pretty quick you could see a dark line here when I got it warm. There was oil coming out. So I'm going to take a grinder and grind this off and put some more quick steel. Which is how I fixed this one on the front right here was some JB Weld quick steel. I love this stuff. Uh, I fixed the after coolers on my scraper with it and pressure tested them to 30 pounds. This stuff works. It's awesome. Okay, the cool thing about this stuff is you can get your hands wet and rub it and smooth it up nice and pretty. And then it doesn't look like that over there full of fingerprints and gobby. And it doesn't hurt it to do that. So we'll let that cure overnight. And then we're going to go move the scrape or the excavator tomorrow with it. I've got a leak right in here somewhere in this area inside on the uh, air to air cooler. So this has got to get come off either get fixed or get replaced because you can't make boost if you leak it. Okay, I took some uh, header wrap. You can see it under here. I didn't have any clamps. So I just took some uh, insulating, some we call it speed tape, and put it around there to hold it on. Poked a hole for the vents right there just to protect this from that heat. <laughs> Hey everybody, wanted to kind of give you an update. 
Wanted to let you know what's going on with the C15. I've been honest with you. Uh, been up front, totally naked with you. Well, okay, not literally. But I'm showing you all the mistakes I've made and all the issues I'm having. I'm going to keep doing that. So, uh, yesterday I had something really awesome happen. Bruce Mallison from Pittsburgh Power was passing through Blackfoot, Idaho, and I spoke to him. He was on his way up to Montana to do some snowmobiling. I told him I needed some help with this. I was having some issues. So here's what I've learned from Bruce. If you're going to go to a single turbo, you're going to have to do some ECM tuning. So here's what he's going to do for me. This morning he had one of his engineers call me and we spoke and they are sending me a remote diagnostic kit. Now what that's going to do is it's a laptop. It's going to plug into the computer and then uh, via Wi-Fi and the internet the engineer back at Pittsburgh Power is going to be able to look at what my computer is doing. Now one of the issues we're having here is we're not getting the boost and we think that the computer is derating the engine for some reason. So what I've learned again is you're going to have to do some electronic, uh, some ECM retuning if you're going to a single. So tomorrow I'm going to have that and then uh, I'll share the results and what we've done uh, Monday, Tuesday, at the latest Wednesday I'll have a video showing that. You saw the EGTs go to 1300. I was concerned about that. Bruce told me not to and his engineer also said not to be worried that these things are capable of running up to almost like 1500 degrees. But with their ECM tuning I should be able to get down under 1300 easily which is awesome. I'm uh, going to share with you uh, some, some interesting things about turbocharging. Uh, one of the, the reasons I put the Blaylock Turbo on is I get the best of both worlds. Uh, you saw how this works in the video and what we were doing was we were using the engine retarder to put a load on the engine to make that actuate. So with it shut, you get the benefits of a small housing. You get a quick spool up with it all the way open. You get the benefits of a large housing. So it's the best of both worlds. And that's why I went with it. Now, I think it's awesome that Bruce is going to help me with this tuning. And we're going to show you everything involved in that. Uh, I'm going to share in a video all the parts you need to do this, everything that's involved. Uh, everything you need to switch this over including the tuning. Now one of the other issues we have is I had some boost leaks and this is really important. If you're going to do this or even if you still have twins you need to check for boost leak leakage and I you saw in the video I had one of the charge air hoses up here that was leaking pretty bad and so I replaced both of them on the top I put a new one here to replace this, that one I got from the junkyard with this elbow just to make sure we didn't have any problems there. Now my charge air cooler in front of the radiator has some leakage. So that's got to come out. It's either got to get fixed or replaced. But you got to make sure that you don't have any leaks on the boost side. Otherwise it's not going to make power. And so stay tuned and I'll show you what's involved with that and I'll be able to show you uh, the improvement by doing the ECM tuning. Now uh, the variable valve actuators are going to stay put. And Pittsburgh Power believes in those actuators and what they do. And what they do is they reduce NOx emissions. And how do they do that? Well they hold the valves, intake valves open on the compression stroke for somewhere I think around 15 percent of that upward stroke and why do they do that? Because it lowers the temperature at which you're going to create that explosion and by lowering combustion chamber temperature you lower NOx emissions and so they work really well for that. 
But I'm assuming, this is just my guess here, that with a single turbo, they're gonna have to change the dynamics of that and how they operate a little bit. But this engine has 18 to one compression. So if you disable the variable valve actuators and you poke 50, 60 plus pounds of boost to it, you're going to break the head. You're gonna blow the head gasket, stretch the head, you're gonna do some damage. And so if that's your goal, is to make huge amounts of power, you're gonna need to lower the compression. And the only way to do that is basically turn it into a 6NZ, which is gonna have a 15 or 16 to one compression ratio. So, but you're not gonna meet the EPA requirements, and so that's all on you. I don't plan on doing that here. Uh, I'm gonna keep the VVAs and uh, just go with the single turbo and uh, get it tuned and get this thing working. So stay tuned. Uh, early next week I'll show you a video of what we found on the truck and where we're going from there to tune it and get this system working right. Hey everybody, it's been a long and difficult week for me. You saw in the video my troubles and I got stuck on the side of the freeway. God, I hate that. There's nothing worse than being stuck on the side of the freeway. And uh, I wanna give a shout out to some of my awesome subscribers. Wanna give a shout out to one of my homies from Sweden, Peter Jorberg. Uh, thanks for subscribing, Peter. Matt Roberts from the UK, thanks Matt. And Philip Meadley from the UK, he's a farmer there. Thanks Philip for subscribing. Mark Lewis from Palmer, Alaska and Andrew Tyfree from Houston, Alaska. Uh, that's awesome that you're watching Clear Up in Alaska. Thanks for subscribing, guys. Jimmy Ulrich from Mead, or excuse me, Pike County, Missouri. Thanks for subscribing, Jimmy. Uh, Kelly Cook from Amarillo, Texas. Uh, Kelly, I hope everything works out great for you. Uh, Kelly had an accident and he's no longer in the trucking business. Kelly, if you have some pictures of your trucking career and the truck you drove, send them to me. I'd be glad to showcase them for you. Uh, your comment made my day the other, other day when you said you'd been watching my videos and it uh, helps you pass time of day, so uh, that really tickled me. Thank you. Uh, Renee Oyele from uh, New Brunswick, Canada. I hope I pronounced your last name correctly, Renee. And Roy Timko from uh, Alberta, Canada. Thank you, Roy, for subscribing. One of the things that I really would like to see is some of the female subscribers that I have. I would love to mention your name and where you're from on the board. So gentlemen, please be gentlemen and be kind to these ladies when I read their name. <laughs>
Well, Peter, I got to tell you, don't you know that uh, us heavy equipment operators have big rippers? This next picture, I love this truck. This is a really cool truck. This is from Thomas Cook. And this is a, uh, I don't know what year this is. For some reason, it didn't print this out. He says it's for sale. This looks like a W900L, but I'm not sure. So anyway, sorry about that, Thomas. For some reason, it didn't print out where you're from. Okay, when I start out my truck picture section, you'll notice this cab over. And this is an old uh, 19, I think, was it 74, 75 Peterbilt cab over. And this is from Greg Sheritz. And this has got a 1693 in it. And it looks like he had the motor out and he's done a lot of work to it to bring it back to life. That's an awesome truck, Greg. Thank you for sharing that with us. These next truck's pictures, uh, you'll notice that the one picture is in the uh, opening to our truck pictures. This is from Mark Knowles. And he's a, he had a 38 year career from 73 to 2011. He was in the U.S. Army, Wilding Transportation, Aero Transportation, Matlack, and KDL Logistics, which is Fred Meyer, and a lot of different pictures. That's really cool, Mark, and uh, thank you for sending the pictures. These trucks belong to John Warlow out of Owen Sound, Ontario, Canada. He says, enjoy your videos. Here's some pictures of my trucks. The 06 and 07 W900Bs were coal haulers from Utah as well. C15 with 18 speeds. I run the short hood A model six days a week and the long hood is for summertime use. I also have a 67 950 cat and a 955 I use around the farm. Keep up the good work. Thanks, John. I love that A model and I love that paint job on there. That is cool. Uh, that uh, color changing paint scheme is something else. Thanks, John. Hey everybody, wanted to uh, mention somebody who's a subscriber to my channel and a fellow YouTuber. His name is Michael McCoy, who has cancer and he's trying to leave a legacy for his grandchildren through his YouTube channel. I received a comment some time back from somebody who said, Jeff, you're leaving quite a legacy for your children and grandchildren. And when Michael said that he had cancer and that he was wanted to leave something for his grandchildren so that they knew him better when he's gone, it really hit me, that comment that somebody said to me. And I thought, you know, that's really true. And so Michael doesn't get a lot of money off YouTube. He has to have a certain amount of subscribers and a certain amount of views. And so the easiest way to help him would be to run over to his channel and uh, you know what to do. Uh, so I think he'd really appreciate that and it, it would be awesome. So I fly